Good morning. The title of the devotional this morning is Jesus is Beside You. Let me say that again because I want you to hear it very loud and very clear. Jesus is beside you. I had an experience with a couple when I was doing an interim recently, and I want to tell you about that experience. It was with a man and a woman, and I'm going to call the man Steve. That wasn't his name, but I'm going to call him Steve in order to tell the story. The conference with Steve and his wife is etched in my memory. He was to have surgery in Oklahoma City the following morning and was very concerned about the surgery. I could not be with them in the city because of a prior commitment, so I asked if they could come by the church office so I could visit with them and have prayer with them. After some moments of talking and sharing, primarily about Jesus and his concern and care and about his healings, I reached for Steve's hand, took them in mine, and said to him, Steve, in the morning when they come to your room to take you to surgery, I want you to have an image in your mind. I want you to picture Jesus walking beside your gurney as you're being taken to surgery. I want to envision Jesus standing beside you by the operating table, being right beside you and being with you during the entire procedure. Then I had prayer with the two of them thanking Jesus for being beside us in our time of concern and anxiety, worry, and fear. In the 14th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus makes a wonderful promise to each one of us, and I want you very much to hear this for yourself this morning. In verse 16, he says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. The Greek word here is very interesting. It's the word paraclete, coming from two parts of two different words. Para, meaning alongside of or beside, and kaleo, meaning called. So literally, called to be alongside of or beside of. The word paraclete is translated variously in different versions of the Bible. They are interesting. Let me share with you. In the King James Version, the translation is comforter. I will give you the, I will ask the Father and he will give you a comforter. Other versions use words like advocate, helper, companion, counselor, friend, and Holy Spirit. The central idea is what we will, that we will have a spiritual presence from God and Jesus to be right alongside us, right beside us, to strengthen and empower us according to the need of our life at that particular time. In our grief, a comforter, in our aloneness, a companion. In our special need, a helper. In trying to communicate for Jesus, an advocate. In times of persecution, a strong, empowering friend. In times of decision, making and choosing a way, a counselor. Two years ago, July 1st, 1918, I had been asked to bring a sermon at morning worship at Central Christian Church. With some reluctance and concern, I accepted the invitation, and then I began to work on what I was going to preach on, what I was going to say, deciding the content of my message. I chose the sermon, which I ent entitled, and some of you might remember, What Does God Look Like? 
which allowed me to preach on a subject so very strongly on my heart and spirit. I anguished and stewed. I wrote and rewrote the sermon. I was extremely worried to do a good job, an outstanding job, communicating this very special truth about Jesus as the Christ. I, uh, I worried and worried and worried. One morning, I was seated in my blue chair, thinking, meditating, working hard on the message, when suddenly, from deep within my being, came these words, which I heard being from Jesus. The words were, Bill, I'm going to help you. My, I heard those words, not out loud, but very strongly spoken in my mind, in my heart, and very deeply within my spirit. Jesus, by my side, helping me. What a gift. And I still feel today that it was one of the best sermons, perhaps the most important sermon I have ever preached. And Jesus helped me with it. I know that many of you are feeling isolated and alone during these COVID-19 days. Beloved, Jesus is beside you. He is by your side. If you are afraid, he will strengthen your trust. If you are fearful, he will bring you comfort. If you are grieving the loss of a loved one, he will be beside you to bring you solace. If you are being persecuted, Jesus will empower you. If you are being abused, he will strengthen your resolve and give you courage. If you feel abandoned, he will be your constant companion. If you need guidance, Jesus will be your counselor. If you need strengthening, he will be your helper. If you just need someone, Jesus will be your friend. Finally, if you're thinking about death and dying, as some of us do, I especially need for you to hear these words from John 14, 3. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you unto myself, so that where I am, you may be also, so that even in death, Jesus will be beside us, beside you, beside me. Jesus will be victorious with us in death. Imagine that you are one of Jesus' disciples, seated around the table as Jesus speaks these words as he looks directly into the eyes of each of us very intently, as if they are meant only for the one that he's looking at. And he shares these words of good news about his victory and ours individually about death and dying. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. My, what a wonderful promise. We will be right there with Jesus. Say the words aloud to yourself when you need to hear them. Jesus will be beside me, and Jesus is beside me right now. Have a blessed day.